On the eve of the anniversary of the fall of the Alamo, the lieutenant governor is firing shots of his own. Dan Patrick released a prepared statement today through his campaign criticizing the Alamo redevelopment plan, calling it badly off track. Garrett Berger is live now at the Alamo. He tells us Patrick is using election results to make his point. Garrett, what is Patrick actually saying? Well, Republican voters in Tuesday's primary overwhelmingly approved 10 resolutions, include one, including one that states Texans should protect and preserve all historical monuments, artifacts, and buildings such as the Alamo Cenotaph and our beloved Alamo, and should oppose any reimagining of the Alamo site. Citing those results, Patrick says the issue now seems to be settled. The Alamo plan, which includes adding a visitor center and redesigning the plaza, has provoked criticism for years now, much of it revolving around the plan to move the cenotaph a few hundred feet to where the bandstand is now. Besides saying he hasn't heard a good explanation for why the cenotaph needs to be moved, Patrick also criticized the most recent designs he's seen for the plaza and touched on what he said were Texans' expectations for the project. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino, whose district includes the Alamo and who has pushed in favor of this redesign, says the project went through a vigorous and transparent process. This is something where we included many experts uh, to tackle an incredibly complex project. Um, the, the effort is, is something that I think we can all be very proud of and I personally uh, feel very, very strongly about uh, the momentum on the project. Uh, this is a, a good thing for San Antonio and for Texas. In his statement, Patrick singled out the general land office headed by Commissioner George P. Bush in his criticism and said he would recommend the state find another entity to provide oversight if the GLO can't handle the job. We reached out to the general land office for comment, but have not yet heard back. Now, the Texas Historical Commission will, leave, will meet later this month and as part of its meeting, we'll discuss authorizing the dismantling, re restoration and relocation of the cenotaph as, uh, as well as other permits for ongoing work around the Alamo. Live at the Alamo, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Health officials in Northeast Harris County in Houston now reporting their first two cases of the novel coronavirus. Officials believe the cases are travel related and not a community spread. These are the second and third cases in Texas after the first case in Fort Bend County outside of Houston. If you include the ev evacuees that are being treated right now in San Antonio, there are a total of 13 cases in Texas. Today, Governor Greg Abbott announced Texas now has the ability to test for coronavirus. Testing will be available at 10 public health labs. However, only six of them are open right now. The others, including one in San Antonio, expected to be ready by the end of the month. This new ability to provide testing in the state will shorten the time to get the test results and will help public, public health take the appropriate steps. Once all of the test clinics are online, medical personnel will be able to test more than 100 patients a day. Governor Abbott also acknowledged the cases outside of evacuees here in San Antonio, saying they're anticipating similar cases to arise and encourage communities to take extra precaution to sanitize public areas, hand washing, and encouraging you to stay home if you're sick. It's only been two days since Metro Health opened a hotline and they have seen anywhere between 50 to 75 calls a day on the subject. This coronavirus hotline for the Bear County residents with questions. It's been operating by it's been operated by only seven epidemiologists. The director says the most common question being asked is who is at risk and who's not. The second most common question is regarding the risk at spring break. We are also getting questions from folks outside of San Antonio wanting to know if it's safe to travel into San Antonio for sp spring break. And the answer again is yes, because the risk at this time is low. Uh, as long as you practice your common everyday preventive measures, you should be good. Now, in regard to testing, Metro Health received its testing kits yesterday, but it will take about two to three weeks to get them validated. And once that happens, the San Antonio facility will be the first to test. Other local hospitals will go online with testing later once more kits become available. The number to the Metro Health hotline is on your screen right now. Lines are open from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. 
Around the nation now, the Senate this afternoon approving an $8.3 billion funding bill to combat the COVID-19 virus. In New York, confirmed cases increased by double digits, and at least 1,000 New Yorkers are under self-quarantine. In San Francisco, the Coast Guard flying test kits to this Grand Princess cruise ship after an elderly woman died after being exposed during a cruise on that same ship last month. Today, several passengers and crew members being tested for the virus, the ship not being allowed to dock. Once we have results from the tests, the CDC and the state will determine the most appropriate location for the ship to berth. The World Health Organization says the number of newly reported cases in South Korea appears to be declining, although worldwide more than 2,000 cases reported in the last 24 hours. For a full list of where coronavirus testing will be available or any updates on current cases around the nation, head over to our website, ksat.com. In other news, a Judson ISD teacher now facing charges for allegedly sexually assaulting an eight-year-old female student. 33-year-old Ryan England is a first grade teacher at Eloff Elementary School. The father of the victim reported the assault to Judson ISD police. The arrest affidavit states the child reported that England placed his hands in her pants several times. England allegedly tried to give her takis and snacks to keep it a secret. The alleged incidents occurred both during and after school during what's called Adventure Club time. The help of neighbors saving a woman who was inside of a burning home early this morning. The fire reported around 3 a.m. on Kate Skank Avenue, not far from Highway 281 and Southeast Military Drive. Fire officials say when they got there, the woman's home was on fire and flames had spread to the roof and attic of the home next door. Neighbors called the homeowner still inside, telling her that her home was on fire. She was able to escape through a back sliding door. I was stuck in the backyard and and my neighbor just grabbed me, man. She just grabbed me over the fence. My clothes, I mean, my car, everything is gone. A neighbor also went over the fence to retrieve her dog. The home is deemed a total loss. Arson is investigating the cause. The homeowner says she bought the home 21 years ago. Well, I tell you, it sure would, ni would be nice to see a good soaking rainfall, especially with our drought situation. But it's hard to really argue with a day like today. Bright sunshine and comfortable. Just beautiful out there. You can even open the windows and let the air circulate if you're not too sensitive to the mold, which is high, by the way. Mid-70s along the border, 78 even in Floresville. Shirt 73 degrees. You get into Bulverde at 71. And Myco right now in Dean's backyard, 73 along with Windcrest. So just glorious out there right now. Feeling great, looking good. We'll have some high thin clouds this evening and temperatures just gradually falling through the 60s and into the 50s. By 9 p.m. will be about 59 degrees and early tomorrow morning, I think we'll start the day in the mid 40s. We have an updated drought monitor. I want to talk about that and let you know how much longer these beautiful days will last coming up. Thank you, Adam. We have an alert for parents tonight. There is a big recall for a dresser that may be in your child's bedroom. IKEA is recalling nearly a million of them. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us that even though the dresser isn't very tall, it does have a big problem. Furniture tip overs. They happen more often than you might think. Dresser tip overs alone have resulted in 212 deaths since 2000, mostly young children who tend to climb or stand on open drawers. Now, IKEA is recalling 970,000 Cullen three drawer chests, calling them unstable if not anchored to the wall. Six incidents have been reported, none serious, though IKEA says the hazard may result in death or serious injuries to children. It is also the first to fail new voluntary industry standards. The Cullen chest is only about 28 inches tall, but last year, Consumer Reports tests of short dressers got results that might surprise you. We found that just because a dresser is low and seems stable, like one that's three drawers high, it can still pose a deadly tip over risk to small children in your home. Government figures show at least five deaths linked to dressers just 30 inches tall or less. This is what 
safety advocates recommend. It's a tether or anchor kit. You secure the furniture to the wall to keep it from tipping over. It's a simple and inexpensive solution. If you have the three drawer Cullen dresser, the CPSC says anchor it or move it to where children can't get to it and contact Ikea for either a free anchor kit or a full refund. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Another contender for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination has dropped from the race. After failing to win in any of the contests so far, Elizabeth Warren is bowing from the campaign, leaving Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden to duke it out. Emily Schmidt in Washington with a look at the impact of her campaign and what this means going forward. Elizabeth Warren is out of the race. I announced this morning uh, that I am suspending my campaign for president. The Massachusetts senator began her run for president with a clear goal. Our fight is for big structural change. And a lot of plans. I have a plan. That's my plan. And I got a plan for that. She led the pack early in the campaign, spurred by strong debate performances. But as the race wore on, she just couldn't find her place in the wide field of candidates. I was told when I first got into this, there are two lanes. And I thought it was possible that that wasn't the case, that there was more room and more room to run another kind of campaign. <laughs> but evidently that wasn't the case. Now it's down to Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders for the nomination. But as other former candidates have been quick to choose between the two, Warren is holding off on any endorsement. I need some space around this and I and want to take a little time to think a little more. Despite her failure to notch any wins, Warren says she feels she made a difference within the Democratic Party. We have ideas now that we talk about that we just weren't talking about even a year ago. And a difference in the lives of young girls around the country. One of the hardest parts of this is all those baby promises and all those little girls we're going to have to wait four more years. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt.